the GOP donor who gave gifts and paid for luxury vacations for Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas says he would rather not talk about his relationship to the justice at all. In an interview with The Atlantic, Texas real estate billionaire Harlan Crow says he hopes, quote, this is my last conversation I have on this topic in public and that he can just go back to being just an old guy. As we've reported, Crow last week refused to give Senate Democrats information on his ties to Justice Thomas. He argues they lack the authority to investigate his personal friendship with the justice. For more on this, I'm joined by the author of that piece we mentioned, Graham Wood. Graham, it's good to be with you. Thank you for coming in. What stood out to you just in a basic sense from your conversation with Crow? I was just shocked at how little Crow understood how much scrutiny his friend was going to get, get him. I mean, Harlan Crow, he's a very smart person, and Harlan Crow is one of his closest friends is, is Clarence Thomas. But, you know, having a close friend who is a Supreme Court justice is different from having any other kind of close friend because you can't buy Clarence Thomas a hot dog without someone wondering what the purpose of that is. And it seems like Harlan Crow has never wondered what the purpose of that is. And why do you suppose that is? Uh, well, why do you suppose that is? Well, I, I think he, he's a person who thinks of integrity as the highest virtue. And he, he thinks that he has a person in his friend circle who he trusts with everything. He trusts with secrets. He trusts with, with um, you know, accompanying him and, and his family on, on these vacations. And so the idea that someone who has such integrity would, would, would be the subject of scrutiny by people who don't trust him at all is shocking to him. But of course, again, he's not a normal friend, and so he should expect the entire world to wonder why he's taking someone like this on, on very expensive vacations. That notion of integrity was such an interesting part of your piece because it is in the one, I mean, a lot of American norms are founded on, and pub, people in positions of public power are given leeway because of that idea of character. Yeah. Um, Part of your conversation with him illustrates how he is in a world apart because of his wealth. Is that idea of integrity, of good men are protect, we, good men can handle these responsibilities because they are good men. Did that feel in the same category of being an antiquated belief that he doesn't recognize has changed by the nature of the way politics has changed? I think he actually does recognize that it's changed. And, and part of that is because so much of his political activism has been against Donald Trump. He thinks that Donald Trump is, is the the key example of someone in politics who has no integrity whatsoever. And it's almost as if Harlan Crow, in his view of politics, doesn't have a way of integrating someone who is a defector from this big game of, of having integrity. And so with the assumption that everybody who achieves high office, everybody who is confirmed to the Supreme Court can be trusted, comes a level of trust that I, I think many of the rest of us who are maybe more cynical just don't have anymore. He also said that he doesn't think he has any influence over politics, um, even though he has this vast wealth and he's participated in it in a variety of ways. One of the things that ran throughout your piece was, does, do you think he genuinely believes that? Because as you say, he does have these views which are different. They're not just kind of the party line. Does he genuinely believe that or is that just um, something he says because he's in this fix and he wants to get out of it? Yeah, I, I think a lot of very powerful people have delusions about how much power they have because you know, you could be a billionaire, you can sink that money into politics, and your candidate doesn't get elected. I mean, he's a Republican mega donor who opposed Donald Trump, and a lot of good it did. So I, I think when people say that he is, you know, orchestrating the right wing conspiracy, that he runs the Republican Party, he says, actually, no, I can't get anything done, and uh, I'm just an ordinary guy. But he's anything but an ordinary guy. He's not even an ordinary rich guy. But, you know, there he is. And he's in the center of the, the political spotlight, which is exactly where he's been trying to avoid for, for much of his life. He says he wants this to be the last interview. Do you think that's possible? Do you think he can go back to the life he had before? No, of, of course not. I mean, this is going to change his, the, his, the first line of his obituary. It's going to change uh, what people remember about Harlan Crow. He, he wants to be an ordinary guy, a Texas multimillionaire. And people will remember him instead as being the guy who maybe corrupted a Supreme Court justice. Graham Wood, staff writer at The Atlantic. Thanks a lot, Graham. Thank you.